Well, we're all counting the pennies in January and later find out how to dish up some debt-free dinners on 4 Live. Now, though, it's Shortland Street. You are the face of Shortland Street. Your behaviour, public and private, needs to be above reproach. You hit like a girl! <laughs> It's okay, it's okay, we're sweet. You all right, eh, bro? Look, he's okay. It's the best workout he's ever had, right? Hey, where you going, man? Let's finish this. Don't be a pussy. Get help. Same time tomorrow, bro. He's a psychopath. Not quite. He seriously messed up. First the fight in the bar and now this. Guy should be in custody, not running this place. You have a duty to report what Hone did. <laughs> to who? Look, it happened outside the workplace during our break. No one pushed me into the ring and it's not exactly a good look for me either. You cannot just let this slide. Honey, I'll deal with this in my own way with him. So what are you going to tell Callum? That you walked into a cupboard? Callum's upstairs. If he doesn't see me, I don't have to tell him anything. Oh, for goodness. The next time Rob Hutter lashes out, it might not be a fit young man like you. He needs to be stopped before he really hurts someone. Someone who can't fight back, baby. No, oh, the prodigal returns. What the hell happened to you? A vigorous gym workout. Now I'm trying to come to terms with these contracts. Ah, uh, could you excuse us, please? Now would be good. Problem? You bet there's a problem. What's the deal with your face? You look like you've been mugged. It's a boxing gym. You take a few hits. <laughs> Whatever. No public appearances till you start to look like a human being again. Definitely no FaceTime with anyone from the DHB. I thought they'd appreciate a CEO who keeps fit. I think they'd appreciate a CEO who doesn't look punch drunk. I would appreciate a CEO who doesn't go wandering off. Well, until I sign the contract, Callum's still in charge, okay? So can't you see him about whatever it is? <sighs> Don't throw this back on him. I needed to talk to him about a security contract that you signed off on this morning. Callum's already banged on about that. You know, we'd actually come up with a good deal. The contractors were about to sign, and then he puts his inferior offer on the table. We? Who'd you work on the contract with? Libby. Smart girl. Did you make the call to the company? Libby was entirely capable. <sighs> Do you actually want this job? Yes, I want this job. Well, I need to be sure about that. Well, I know the country. I know the area. I know the hospital and the politics. The security contract, well, Libby had it all sus, so I let her run with it. Now, if Callum hadn't stomped all over it, we'd have saved thousands while retaining a beefed-up security. And this, this is my beauty regime. <laughs> well, your beauty regime has got to go, seriously. You find some other way to get whatever the hell it is out of your system. And just don't let us down. Mm, nothing wrong here. How's pain level now? Actually, it's a bit better. No, well, it might have been good old-fashioned indigestion. Makes me feel a bit stupid. Waiting all that time on me. Ain't no harm done. Boy, nearly five hours I've been here. Oh yeah. Right this way, mate. Our apologies and um, enjoy. Magic. Thanks, sir. New Zealand Youth Orchestra. Hmm. Any tickets for the Hurricanes game? Uh, sorry, absolutely no swaps. I'll pay. Come, come on, mate. Give you a 20. Have a nice day. 50. Try a ticket agency. They're sold out. This was my last chance. 80? Have a nice day, Mr Lowell. Yet another case of indigestion? Yeah. Do you still think this customer reward scheme is a great idea? Mm. Hmm. New policy. All cases of indigestion will be told that enemas will be used in difficult to diagnose cases. A 
Labour, I just thought I'd come see how you're doing. You're still mad, huh? It was stress, bro. You know, and I didn't realise it was actually building up on me so bad, and I think I actually took it out on you, so... You know, I just... You have my unconditional apology. Aroha mai ehoa. No ku tehi. Is that it? Yeah. If they hadn't dragged you off, would you have stopped punching me? You lost the control, mate, like at the pub the other night. Well, look, it won't happen again, bro. Hey, why don't we just go and have a beer? Gee, an invitation to go drinking with you doesn't really appeal for some reason, you know? What happened to you, mate? Hey, I'm trying to give you an apology here. <laughs> Who's this? It's my mate. She's a councillor on tap. She's been dealing with the Somalian refugees who have been through the worst kinds of hell you can imagine. Oh, look, I'll, I'll just leave it to it, bro. Now, some of our customers have been faking minor illnesses, waiting there four hours, and then skipping out of here clutching their free tickets. Ah, the blues game is proving particularly popular. Hmm. I'm sure the irony of the situation won't escape you. The more of these prats waste our time, the longer the waiting times will be, and the more of these free tickets we'll have to hand out will become a de facto booking agency. So what are we going to do? We could sell the tickets. We would make out like bandits. Keep a record of Malinga is here. I'm going to use the numbers to argue that the stupid patient reward scheme should be disbanded. All right, everyone, back to it. Are you cool? All right. Found on the ground outside the pub on the corner smells strongly of alcohol, uncooperative with basic requests, some grazes, but no obvious injuries. Right. Um, I want our threes out of here first. Just stick him in a bed and monitor him regularly. He can wait. <sighs> Amen. What? Latte. Thank you. What happened? Ah, oh, young Dr. TK and I went off to his boxing gym and things got out of hand. <laughs> things got out of hand. <laughs> I lost it. It's getting to be a habit. Yeah. <laughs> this clinic in Darfur, the one that got destroyed, you're not telling me the whole story, are you? Well, uh, government-controlled militia ran the whole area. They raped and took whatever they wanted, when they wanted. We had to stitch them up when they got hurt. That, plus money, medicine, food, in return for protection. Finally, I just jacked up. They just cleaned me out of the antibiotics. I had a dozen kids dying in front of me. And I said to the commander, there's nowhere in the Quran that said that what you were doing was anything but murder. Well, he burns the clinic to the ground rapes or kills a few of the workers and then laughed in my face. You know, you, you don't forget those things in a hurry, Chris. Well, uh, I won't even attempt to understand how you feel. That would be impossible, but this is the reason why you've given yourself a desk job, why you don't want to be hands-on anymore. No, well, you just make certain calls and then it's, it's hard to trust your instinct, you know, when you make some bad calls. Do you want to be CEO? Well, I want to make a success of something. Well, I, I can't tell you what to do with the guilt, but you should feel confident in your abilities at least, even behind a desk. You're a first-rate doctor. You'll do a first-rate job. You know I don't just say that about anyone. 